What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to go over my top 10 most anticipated games that have still not released in 2023. I made a list, and I actually made a list about 15 to 17 games long. I'm going to condense it down just to the top 10, because although Starfield is out, and it is a behemoth, I almost feel like we're still in the calm before the storm, and the second half of September is really when we just get hit almost every day, or more realistically, every week with one or two big releases. So let's start this thing off with number 10 star ocean second story r i wanted this one to kick off the list simply because i think it looks really really good i know next to nothing about star ocean i think we actually own a star ocean game my wife has it but i've never touched it i've never really even looked at it but this game from everything that i've seen so far looks absolutely spectacular and releases in a slightly less packed november meaning i probably have a higher possibility of actually playing this game compared to other games but it's mainly just because of the looks because of obviously the style of game that it is I want to give it a shot and maybe this can be my entry point into the Star Ocean franchise number nine is actually Ghost Runner 2 so in preparation for it I played the first game it was actually recommended to me and I absolutely loved it I hated it at the same time as I died so many freaking times I actually am going to do a count and make a video on my third channel but I love it I think it's a really really good game pretty darn good story too honestly so I'm up for a second game the second game comes out in a truly unfortunate window of time where again it just kind of gets smothered from both sides with other games I don't know if I'll get it day one but I am getting it before the end of the year and I will play it before the end of the year but I'm I'm a newfound fan let's say of the Ghost Runner franchise and I'm not going to skip Ghost Runner 2. Number eight is Super Mario Bros. Wonder. It's lower on the list but honestly my top 10 are all games that I could think about pretty much every single day. The higher up we get I do think about these games every single day. Wonder looks so good the new Nintendo Direct they did just a few days ago and made it look absolutely incredible you know they're hiding things as well and yet they also are so confident to show us so many mechanics and so many kind of looks at levels and abilities and all of this different stuff the game looks so good I'm excited to play it it's exciting you can play with other people maybe my entire family can play it um, but I'm really looking forward to playing it the biggest weakness is of course it's coming out the same day as Spider-Man and I don't feel the same urge to play this day one as I would for Spider-Man. So I might have to wait on this game a little bit, but again, this is a game that I kind of guarantee I'll get before the end of the year. Number seven is City Skylines 2. This is definitely an odd one, right? A different genre type game being thrown in, but if you didn't know, I actually really, really love City Builders, and City Skylines 1, I really, really liked. I actually covered it in the very, very early days of this channel. And the second game, I've been keeping up. I've been watching all their developer diaries. I'm actually going to be covering the game a little bit closer to launch and it's actually unbelievable the amount of stuff and the jump like literally what they're doing in a sequel you know I think of like the EAs of the world of like the Sims and how they strip it down and then kind of build it back up the exact same way from one game to the next for say the Sims for City Skylines no 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 it's everything possible that was in the first game times a thousand and then there'll be more things you know after release but that's the number one thing that gets me how good it looks yes but also they're starting literally where they left off they're improving upon anything they can think of and they're also adding so many more features so many more mechanics to make the world truly feel like it's a it's a real world that you're going to be controlling and building stuff so I am super as you can probably tell super excited for this game although it's a different kind of game and that's good because this will be a game that I can pick up put down don't need to play you know 500 hours within the first week it can take its time and that's why it's on this list honestly number six is Mortal Kombat 1 I actually wanted to put it higher but I do have to think about I'm getting it for the story I think the uh, tactic board you know the RPG kind of new mode that they're doing I actually think that looks really, really cool. But beyond that, if you've watched my other Mortal Kombat videos, I'm terrible at these games. I stand no chance in the multiplayer arena. So if I did play that, I would just get destroyed. I'm not getting Mortal Kombat 1 for that reason. So to me, its main value, and honestly, maybe 95% of its value, is the single-player story where I'm, I'm very excited. I've gone back in time, and I've played so many Mortal Kombat games over the last month. Again, I've actually done videos on my third channel on them, and I love it. I uh, I've been a fan for a while, but I haven't been this much of a fan until literally like two, three, four weeks ago. It's really been that soon, but I'm really excited for this game. I can't wait to see what they do with the story, and again, that's why it's here. Number five is Assassin's Creed Mirage. Here we go. 
go. Let's see if they, I mean, that's kind of my like leading thing with Assassin's Creed. Can they do it? Can they bring Assassin's Creed somewhat back to the beginning while also having, you know, the modern day, the origins on stuff in the game? Looks good. I've never been kind of pushed away from anything that they've shown. I've, I've hung on, right? I've stayed with them. This is exciting. I really hope that they can do it. I like the length of, of the actual game, I guess, right? Being somewhere in like that 20, 25, 30 hour range. This is not going to be a gigantic 90, 100 hour game. And honestly, it can't be for me because you got Alan Wake and Spider-Man and all these games right after it. So I, I want to be invested in the world. I want this game to be hopefully one of the better Assassin's Creed games and to pull me back into Assassin's Creed. And it's going to have a chance really, really soon. It's obviously one of the closer to release games on this list. Number four is Persona 5 Tactica. I went with my gut on this one. I looked at it and I said, well, I could put this lower. But no, honestly, I feel like it deserves exactly where I put it. Because whenever I think of this game, wherever I see it, whether it's a trailer, even if I see literally its name, Persona 5 Tactica, I get excited. I love Persona 5 to death. I actually haven't played Royal, so please don't kill me on that one. But I did play Persona 5. Absolutely adored it. Played Strikers. Love that game to death. This cast is just legendary. I love the cast so much. So anytime that I get to go back into it. I have no Persona 5 fatigue. I know maybe some people do. Uh, I personally don't, at least with the cast itself. And then all these games are relatively different. Nobody's going to confuse Persona 5 Tactica with Strikers or the base, you know, Persona 5. Um, so I think they all kind of stand out. They're all kind of original. Cannot wait. Number three, this is where it gets serious. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. If you've been following the channel for at least the last, say, three, four, five months, you'll know I'm a newfound Yakuza fan, and I've been playing these games actually since around February. I've gone through the entire Kiryu Saga, Yakuza 0, all the way up to 6. I cannot wait. Let me tell you, this game is circled, you know, in my calendar, in my head, in real life. I am so ready to go back into it. Although, I just finished 6 like a month ago. I haven't been away from Kiryu all that long. It feels like this is still a reunion for me. Obviously not the same kind of reunion as it was for people that played the game when it released like 7 years ago. But no, this is... Uh, I could make a case that this could be higher than number 3. That's how excited I am. It looks so good from everything that we've seen. And I'm just really excited to be able to play a modern day Yakuza game. Obviously like a dragon now. But to play one of these games the day it comes out with everybody, with the fans. I've never been able to do that. So this is the one that I'm finally going to be able to. Number two, Marvel Spider-Man 2. That's right. This should not come as a surprise because I've been very consistent on this. Spider-Man 2 is not my most anticipated game of the second half of the year, of the fall, of the entire year. Spider-Man 2 was not number one. That's not to say, you know, I guess the way I'm saying it right now almost sounds like I'm trying to like beat the game down. No, I cannot wait for this game. Replaying uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2018, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales just over the last month, month and a half. I'm so ready. Even if a lot of things are the exact same, I'm excited to get back into that world, to have some fun web swinging, to have some fun beating people up, and to see the new story, to see what they do with Venom and all that stuff. So I am extremely excited. And trust me, you know, I know the beginning, I was putting the game down a little bit. My entire life drops for this game, okay, the day it releases without a doubt. So don't get that confused, okay? But number one, let's talk a little bit about Alan Wake 2. The game, guys, I'm, I'm dead serious. This game looks so freaking good. I just made a video, I think a week, week and a half ago, talking about how this is a you know game of the year contender kind of incoming. We looked at the last uh, 14 minutes, or there's new 14-minute footage of this game back at Gamescom. It's actually unbelievable, you know, how good this game looks from everything that we've seen. And I just love the lore. I love the story, like literally what Alan Wake is and the author and, and Thomas Zane and the Dark Place and Mr. Scratch and all that. I love that lore so much. I think it's a really well-written thing. So I'm actually really excited because kind of behind the scenes, I'm going to at the very least watch the story of Alan Wake. I might replay the game because I just replayed it for the remastered game when that came out like a year, year and a half ago. Uh, but I definitely want to kind of just re-watch it, re-see this game, because I just love it so much. A, a cult classic, a game that I played actually when it first came out. So I'm really 
really pumped for this one. This does. It really looks like a game of the year kind of thing. I would not be surprised, at least for me. I don't care what the Game Awards does. I don't care what IGN does. When you come back at the end of the year to this channel, my channel, I might be saying that Alan Wake 2 is my game of the year. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if I did that because I've been saying it's possible for the entire year. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. What are some games that are still not released yet that you're excited for? There's many games in 2024 that I'm excited for. So we can do a video ranking those uh, once we get past this avalanche of games in the next couple months. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.